you probably know the aid and growth uh, debate has been going on for many years. You know, the, the big question really is, has all this foreign aid that we've been putting into uh, developing countries, has it actually stimulated uh, higher growth rates? So that's the question that we've been looking at that remains very controversial. So a lot of people have uh, historically said uh, either no or we can't tell from the data. So what we've now been doing, perhaps the main aspect of our work, is we've got a longer time frame to look over. So previously people were looking from the 70s to the 80s, so just uh, maybe in five, 10 year periods, but now we've got 30 to 40 years of data. And that helps a lot because we can look at longer term average growth rates. And once you do the, uh, the uh, I mean, there's quite a lot of technical work involved, but, but once you do it carefully, we tend to find a, um, a positive impact of aid on growth that is not massive, but it's, it's reasonable and at a moderate size. So our conclusion would be that if a country had received 10% uh, of its GDP in aid over an extended period of time, its growth rate would be about one percentage point higher uh, than had it not received that aid. Uh, so that's the general conclusion. This is on average, uh, so on and so forth. So it doesn't apply to any individual country, but this is the kind of average that we're getting out of the data. In Mozambique has come through a long process of civil war and so on and so forth. And, and uh, finally, the, the process of, of conflict finished in the early 90s and it transitioned to, uh, to a democracy. Uh, and since then, there's been a lot of what you might say rebound growth. So just catching up to where it was in the past because of the, the nature of the conflict. But what we're seeing now is that a lot of those gains uh, are in a, in a way, that, that a lot of the, the gains from, from, uh, from catching up uh, are not so much there. So the, the question is, where does, where does Mozambique go from now? And the big challenge is, is agricultural sector. So you know, about 60%, 70% of all people work in the agricultural sector, normally in small farms. And the biggest problem uh, that we're seeing is the, a lack of productivity growth in that sector. So for... For, for a lot of people, not just me, who've worked on Mozambique, it's generating or, or stimulating productivity growth in the agricultural sector is going to be critical for an, a more inclusive growth process. I mean, one of the advantages of uh, productivity growth in the agricultural sector is that it makes uh, food cheaper. So therefore, there's more scope for uh, wage employment in, in principle, that it becomes uh, more attractive to create factory jobs and so on and so forth because the wages are, are at a more reasonable, potentially more reasonable level. So you know, the owners of, uh, of factories can, can still make profits at, at reasonable levels. So there are benefits uh, from that. Also, by providing uh, more produce onto the market, it creates the opportunities for other industries such as agro-processing. So ideally there will be, if there's a productivity growth in agriculture, that could help uh, encourage other industries to start developing. So that's one, one aspect. But that's not the only aspect. There's other things that need to happen in the economy through business reforms, through opening up of, of trade and things like that, that would also be beneficial, I think. Oh, these are always the tough questions. Um, I think focusing on the agricultural sector is, is fundamental. And how to do that, I think there's some, there's some quick wins that can, be, that can be achieved through, for example, providing higher productivity seeds, uh, better road and infrastructure, and so on and so forth. So I think that would be the, the focus. But also, I believe uh, the government of Mozambique needs to be willing to experiment. So we don't know which specific policy will work to promote the agricultural sector. So we need to be able to, let's experiment with uh, one or two different public policies. If they don't work after three or four years, that's fine. Let's try something else. But having an open mindset and being willing to fail, I think is very important. There are regional dimensions, certainly linking more closely with South Africa. Uh, there's huge potential there. I mean, the energy uh, prospects as well for the region are very important. So, of course, Mozambique needs to be looking both inwards and outwards. What is contribution uh, is that it's, it's a very uh, extended and well-respected network. So uh, a conference uh, like the one uh, we're attending today uh, brings in people from all over the globe, not just from 
universities in, uh, in Europe, not just universities in the States, but practitioners as well. So it also links together people in a network throughout the world, both in the advanced countries and in developing countries. I think that's critical and provides a platform for policy discussions uh, which aren't, don't have any uh, particular ideological basis, I believe. So being part of the UN system uh, uh, is, is important in that kind of philosophy, uh, I believe. Mm -hmm.